Hello, this is a 5 megapixel PoE IP outdoor AI bullet security camera. And based on that title alone, I can already feel this video may descend into a right geek fest. Hello and welcome back, or if you're new here, then just Hello. This is not a sponsored video at all, but Amcrest were kind enough to send me this for free. So thank you for supporting small creators such as myself. Now, as per the intro, this is a five megapixel IP POE AI camera. And what does that even mean? So five megapixel is the camera's resolution. More on that in the specs. IP means it's network connected. POE means power over ethernet. So using a bog standard network cable, we can deliver both power and data to the camera. And AI? Well, everyone should know what AI is right now, considering it's the only thing that's been spoken about on the internet. Artificial intelligence, which is used in this instance for the human and vehicle detection. All makes sense? Good. Now, it's obvious what the main drawback of a PoE camera is, needing to run a long cable, but what are some of the benefits of using a PoE camera? Well, one, it's a single camera for both power and data. Two, using a cable means you're not reliant on any wireless strength or any affecting environmental factors. Three, it's always connected and accessible. And four, you don't need to worry about recharging or replacing those annoying batteries. This is the black version, but also available in white. And at time of filming this video, it's currently $69.99, which is dollars, which is about 56 great British pounds. Before we get on to said testing, we need to get in the box and see what we get. Opening the box, we are greeted with a screw guide, which for a DIY retard like me is an absolute blessing, along with some marketing cards followed by the obligatory gumph, also known as a user manual. We then have some waterproofing accessories to help protect the ethernet cable. And finally, the main unit itself, which has a fair bit of weight to it, 1.6 pounds to be exact, and measures 7.59 by 2.77 by 2.61 inches. That's it, a quick yet pleasurable unboxing. As I mentioned, this is a five megapixel camera, which has a 2960 by 1668 resolution, which is more than a 2K resolution, but less than 4K. <laughs> and it has a fixed 2.8 mil f 1.4 lens, which gives you 129 degree field of view. So before we go any further, here is what some footage from this camera looks and sounds like. And here is some test footage from the Amcrest 5 megapixel outdoor IP POE security camera. It's powered via a 12 volt plug, not provided, or via POE, as I said, which means you will need to have a device such as a network switch that has POE built in. But please note, most home-based routers and network switches generally won't have this. But you can also use a POE injector like this one, which are readily available on Amazon. And I'll also link one down below for you. This camera offers all you would expect to see, such as night vision and color night vision via the use of a built-in spotlight, human and vehicle detection, and detection zones, but it has no support for any smart home assistance currently. So I'm afraid, Mrs. A, you're gonna have to take a back seat in this video. Also, there is only one way audio with the built-in microphone, so you can hear your intruders, but sadly, you can't have a little chit chat with them. The Amazon listing talks about a uh, software tripwire system, which took me straight back to my days as a kid, setting up booby traps. What I said, booby traps! It supports up to 128 gig micro SD card for storage, and also, as it's IP based, can record to an FTP site or a local NAS. See, I told you this was gonna get a little geeky. They also offer a cloud storage subscription, which is uh, powered by the Amazon Web Services Network, which starts from $6 per month for a single camera. It has an IP67 rating, which means it's dust and water resistant, which is kind of a must for an outdoor camera, especially with the weather here in the UK. Now, when manufacturers start listing details like IP and POE and DDN, I start to get the feeling this may be slightly more of a geeky product. So with the specs out of the way, let's get it set up and tested and find out whether that's true or not. Start by connecting a power supply. I'm using the POE option because my network switch has a power over ethernet port. Next, grab the app from your app store of choice and this is where the complexity starts. Download the Amcrest Cloud app if you plan on using their subscription-based service or download the Amcrest Pro app if you're using your own storage. For this video, I'm gonna be testing with the Amcrest Pro app with local storage only. Unscrew the plate on the bottom of the camera and insert 
insert your micro SD card. Remember, a max of 128 gig. Open the app and allow it the various permissions it needs to access your device. And there's no annoying prompts or requests to create an account, which was very refreshing. Next, choose to add the product. We have their PoE camera. And then you'll be given two options. P2P or IP slash domain slash DDNS. The IP option allows you to access the camera over a network and clicking this will then ask you for an IP address and port to connect to the camera which could easily confuse any what I would call a normal home user. So I'll go into this in more detail shortly. For now, I will connect and test with P2P. You can connect your device directly to the camera wirelessly by scanning the QR code then give the camera a name and then change the default device password. And once you've done that, that's it. Setting up the P2P option is very quick and very easy. So what you didn't see in this setup video was me trying to work out if the camera even had power as when connecting via PoE, there was literally no obvious indication it was even turned on. I did eventually catch a quick flash of the spotlight, but some other indication would certainly have been helpful. Setup using P2P is extremely quick and easy, but this method limits the functionality as it requires my phone connecting directly to the camera which means I need to be at home and close to it in order to view it which is no good when moving around the house or wishing to access it remotely. If you want to be able to view the camera over a network and thus remotely there are various steps you will need to take all of which are explained in detail using the link down below but in short, the process is this. Find out the camera's local IP address on your network that has been assigned using DHCP. Use this IP to then add the camera in the app and then you can now view it when at home. To remotely view it, you will then need to set up a port forward on your router and a dynamic DNS service to assign a friendly name as most users' home IP addresses are gonna change quite regularly. It's this friendly name you then need to enter into the IP box when adding the camera in the app via the IP option. Now, whilst these points were easy for me to understand and complete, for a normal home user, this would be a huge problem. And from experience, most wouldn't have a clue where to start. And it would be people like me that would end up getting the call saying, can you pop round and help me set up my new camera, please? There are extra benefits to using the IP option. One of those is that the camera has a full website built in for you to view and manage the camera. And the web interface is actually awesome for a geek like me any Anyway, but for a home user, yeah, I just, I don't think so. There is a dashboard in the app for viewing multiple cameras at the same time, which I really like, and I wish it's something more manufacturers would start to offer. The recording schedule is also a very nice touch as it allows you to choose specifically per day what times to record detection and what times to just record all the time. Now, the Amcrest Pro app is what most normal users are likely to use. And whilst it's very functional and full of options, I can foresee a problem. What is anti? dither. I thought dithering was something my nan did when she couldn't decide on something. I have no idea what it means in this specific context and it's not explained anywhere. Also the tripwire option I was excited about, nowhere to be seen. Can't find anything about it, which sucks as I was really looking forward to that. Don't get me wrong, whether using the app or the camera's website, the quality of the image in my opinion is very good and the hardware is solid and very competitively priced. So would I recommend this camera to you? Being a channel geared towards smart home devices and thus end users being normal home users, I would have to say no, I couldn't recommend it. But that doesn't mean it isn't a good camera. If, however, you are a geek like me and the talk of PoE, routers and DDNS excites you, then yes, 100% take a look at this camera, especially with the web interface. It is a very capable piece of kit, but I just don't think it's right for a normal home user just yet. From experience, home users just want something simple and easy to set up to start monitoring their home. And sadly, I don't think this is that. So that's it. If you have any questions about this or anything else for that matter, then please do let me know in the comments down below. And whilst you're down there. That's what she said. Please do consider liking the video, even if you didn't, and subscribing if you aren't already, and hitting the bell to get notified when I upload new videos, because it all helps me out by getting sent more free stuff like this to play with and make videos. So yeah, thanks for watching, and bye internet. Throw this shade on me, like they all hate on me. Don't bring that rage on me.